Hello there, YouTube, and hello there, Facebook. Um, I am Katie Power of Sing Without Limits Vocal Coaching, and I just wanted to uh, share with you my five myths about the chest voice. I've been doing a lot of coaching around this topic and learning that there's a whole lot of misinformation, and I thought I'd come in here and dispel some of the myths. So here's what I want you to do. I would love for you to stay active in the chat. Feel free to comment, um, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're watching from YouTube, feel free to comment in the chat um, and I'll come back when I'm done and respond to anything that you have to say. First of all, let me know that you're here. And if you're watching the re replay, make sure to type hashtag replay so that I know to come back and uh, see, give you some love. So. Like I said, we're going to be talking about the five myths about the chest voice. Um, and just right off the bat, if you're already feeling like, oh my God, this is something that I need to know more about. Um, maybe you're someone who's had some struggles in your singing, some vocal health issues. Um, I wanna let you know that I do have, I'll be talking more about this later, giving you a lot more information. But if you know that this is something, an area that you need help, um, I do have five spots available for private coaching, and if you want to talk about what it would look like to fill one of them, then there's a link in the description, uh, which is getmypowerup.com, and that's a place where you can go to um, schedule a time to talk with me about what it would look like uh, to work together in a coaching relationship. So go ahead and check that out if that's something that you are interested in doing if you know someone who might benefit from watching this please tag them or share this out make sure uh, that you are getting this in front of the people that need to see it if that's not you but you know someone who needs this definitely make sure uh, that you send this out hey gabrielle thank you so much that's so nice <laughs> so let's dig in are you ready okay so five myths about the chest voice. So first of all, let's talk about why there are myths to begin with. <laughs> so a lot of times I'm one of my specialties as a teacher is teaching healthy contemporary singing. Um, and one of the biggest misconceptions about that in general is that the chest voice, which is part of your classical technique is what we're supposed to use for everything. So uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding about classical versus contemporary technique. Um, and so everything that we're going to be talking about today is really more related to contemporary singing, because that's primarily the people that I work with. So let's talk about that first myth. That first myth is that your chest voice is the same as belting. So if you don't know what belting is, we will talk about that. But your chest voice, like I said, is a piece of your classical technique. So the classical technique is characterized by a raised soft palate in the back, like a yawn. So if you make a big yawn in your mouth, and you make sound with that, that is part of the classical voice. That kind of lift, that sound, it's either in your chest, huh? Ooh, or your head, right? And that's part of classical singing. Think about opera, things like that. Um, belting does not sound like that at all. Belting is when you are not raising in the back. You're not making that space at all. And the sound is here instead. Um, more like, hey, right? That's more of a belt. So myth number one is that the chest voice and belting are the same thing. And I hear that all the time. People use those terms interchangeably as if they're the same thing, where they say that belting is the chest voice and it's not. They're two totally separate things that are created two totally different ways. So that is myth number one. Ready for number two. <laughs> number two, that the chest voice is the same as talking. So I don't know if you picked up on that, but when I was demonstrating what the chest voice sounds like, we talked about that yawn. 
the only kind of talking that's like your chest voice is when you're talking and yawning at the same time. So if you've ever yawned, uh, if you've ever been talking and had a yawn just kind of attack you in the middle of your talking, and then all of a sudden you're like, blah, 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 and that's what you sound like when you're <laughs> yawning and talking at the same time, that is the only time that we ever talk in a chest voice because it's, it's ridiculous. Nobody talks like that, right? So the way that I'm talking right now, there's no space in the back. There's nothing lifted back there. This is more of a belt. Now, there's another contemporary technique that's called mix, which is a lighter version. And some people speak in a mix. So this is what it sounds like to speak in a belt, which the majority of people do. But some people speak in a mix. Do you hear how much softer this is? I didn't raise my pitch at all, but I just made it a lighter sound. It's not quite as strong and forceful, this is a mix. So this is what it's like to talk in a mix, and this is what it's like to talk in a belt. And this is what it's like to talk in a chest voice. So no, <laughs> the chest voice and talking are not the same thing. So myth number three, are we ready? Let's talk about myth number three. The myth number three about your chest voice is that everyone's chest voice range is different. That is not true at all. Uh, well, here's, here's my caveat. It can be true, but it shouldn't be true. So your chest voice, which is again, when you have that raised soft palate in the back, like a yawn, is only meant to go so high. Now, a lot of singers will stretch and speakers will stretch that chest voice higher than it's meant to go. And when you stretch past that limit, you're putting yourself at, vo at risk of vocal damage. It's one of the most common ways that people have vocal damage, lose their voices, have vocal fatigue. It's from stretching that chest voice higher than it's meant to go. So there's been, I do a lot of, uh, training and talking on TikTok, and there's been a lot of discussion about this myth in particular. A lot of feathers were ruffled when I was talking about the limit that your chest has, um, because a lot of people were saying, well, I can go much higher than that. I was like, well, yeah, we all can, but you shouldn't. So I related it to um, like the speed limit when you're driving. So let's say you're on a highway and the speed limit sign says 65. Now your car obviously can go a lot faster than 65, but the recommendation <laughs> is that you do not go over 65, because if you do, you're putting yourself at risk, you're putting the other drivers on the road at risk, you're putting yourself at risk of getting a ticket, right? It doesn't mean that your car can't go faster, it can, it's just not a good idea. The same is true with the chest voice. It does have a limit and it's not meant not designed to go higher than that in order to stay healthy just because you can <laughs> that is not that's not the same thing as um, staying safe and so you want to make sure that you're honoring that limit so everyone's chest range is different in if you're stretching it out but ideally your chest range shouldn't go any higher than the f sharp above middle c for men and the a above middle c for women once you tr take it past that, you're at risk. It's the danger zone, right? So that is myth number three. Myth number four. Myth number four is that your chest voice is where you want to be singing contemporary music. Now, I sort of touched on this already, right? Um, because I was talking about the difference between classical and contemporary, and there's a whole lot of differing views about that. Part of the reason there, this is such a huge myth and misconception out there is that the vocabulary, not everyone is using the same vocabulary. So like I said, some people are calling belt and chest the same thing. Well, it's really hard to have a healthy conversation with someone about contemporary versus classical singing when their vocabulary is interchangeable, <laughs> right? Um, so no, you absolutely do not want to use a chest voice to sing contemporary music. I always say, unless you're an opera singer or someone who just does choral or classical music, 
you have no need for your chest voice at all. You're not going to speak with it. You're not going to sing with it because you have the tool of belting and belting covers your whole range uh, where we talked about chest having a limit. Um, what happens past that when you actually go to that limit after that you have a break and you switch into your head voice and nobody wants to sing contemporary music in a head voice because it sounds stuffy and weird right. So. Uh, when you have belt you have that whole range available to you and no breaks so there's nothing to navigate there's nothing to try and figure out you know, there's no switching into a head voice there's none of that when you use belt so no you do not want to be using a chess voice in contemporary music because it's very limited plus like i said it has this very dark round weird sound and I don't really understand it, but it is kind of a trend right now to sing like that. I don't like it, <laughs> but I think it's because this has been my world for such a long time being like, no, nah, don't do that. It's, um, and, you know, as long as you're in that safe range, sure, it's fine to sing there. It's just that that safe range is so small, it will limit you so much in what you're able to do. So ideally, you want to not stretch that chest voice range, meaning that everyone's chest voice range should be the same, right? And myth number five, we sort of touched on this too in another way. Myth number five, just because you can, it must be okay or safe. No, 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 no. <laughs> this again goes back to stretching that chest. Just because you can make your chest go higher, that doesn't mean it's okay. Just because you're capable of doing it, does not make it safe or healthy or right. Um, also doesn't really make it sound that good either, right? So just because you can, please don't. <laughs> just I always just say, let go of your chest altogether. You don't need it. It's it's unnecessary. Use your belt. We have a hi Beth. Yes, 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 yes. So she's saying, you helped me perfect this with the steel heart song, and you can't even tell a difference when I'm moving around in the highest and lowest notes. Correct, yeah, because we're not using a chest. She's belting, and then she went into a mix, which I call a mix like belt, which we'll talk about another time altogether. Um, but yeah, that's you have so much more flexibility in your range when you're just utilizing the contemporary techniques of belt and mix. Let go of that chest altogether because it sounds weird it's dangerous you can wear yourself out in no time i know beth can speak to that too it was a long long time ago when we first met that was some she was doing a lot more of chest singing than she was belt singing and now you know that's not even a thing anymore <laughs> um so yeah thank you for for your comment beth that's so helpful so these are the five myths i'll review them review them really quickly the myth is that the chest voice and belting are the same thing. Mm -mm -mm. No, they're not. The myth is that the chest voice and talking are the same thing. No, they're not. <laughs> right? It's ridiculous. Number three, that everyone's chest range is different. No, it's not. Or at least it's not meant to be different. It's meant to be the same in order for you to stay safe and protected. Number four, the chest voice is where you want to sing contemporary music. Oh, please no, please no, don't do it. Don't do it because it only you can only go so high with it. And number five myth, because you can, it must be safe or okay. Absolutely not. Just because you can, it is not safe. It is not okay. <laughs> so I hope that makes sense. If this is sparking some curiosity in you, or if this is ruffling some feathers in you, um, I have a couple of things. I would love for you to follow me on TikTok. I've got a bajillion videos at this point about all of these kinds of things, and you can learn some things. There's a lot of interactive opportunities for you to get feedback. Um, but even more, if you're someone who's looking to go a little deeper, uh, I have five spots available in my private coaching, and I would love to talk to you about what it would look like uh, to work with me. And we will work on not just technique, but performance, on making sure that you have your own unique style, on making sure that you know how to confidently show up to an audition, to a performance, 
uh, to a competition, to a gig, whatever you have going on, we're going to work together to make sure that you've got absolutely everything you need to go in there and knock them dead, right? And yes, Beth is <laughs> highly recommending. Thank you so much, Beth. Yes, Beth has been working with me for a long time and I absolutely love working with her. Um, and a lot has changed for her and a lot of my clients. So it's, um, it, I highly recommend private coaching. It's the best way to get custom feedback on the things that you need specifically. Um, I have a group program as well, and I love it. It's one of my favorite things that I do with singers, but there's something just very different about being able to work with someone privately. And it's also not a cookie cutter kind of thing. Whatever your goal is, is going to be different than whatever someone else's goal is. So being able to work with me one-on-one -on -one to accomplish your specific goal, that's where it is. That's what you wanna be doing. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, um, if you're on Facebook, the link is up in the description. If you're on YouTube, I'm gonna put it in the bottom um, after I get off here. Um, but the, the link to, that you'll want to visit is getmypowerup.com. That's a place where you'll get to first see a whole bunch of results that are possible for you because they're results that clients have actually achieved from working with me. So you'll get a chance to pour through a whole bunch of examples of things that are possible for you. And then after that, you'll schedule a time in my calendar for us to have a conversation. And then you'll be taken through a series of questions to help you get clear about what your goals are, help me get clear about what it is you're looking to achieve, and then we'll get on a call together and we'll talk about it. And if it's a good fit, then I'll make you an offer and we'll go from there. So that is how that works. I would so love to work with you in a private setting if, if you have some goals that you haven't been able to achieve on your own. Here's the thing, my coach says this all the time and um, I think it's brilliant. And she says, if you know, if you could do this on your own, you would have done it by now, right? Um, so we all need support and it's okay to need support. So here I am. I am support. I would love to help you. So it's getmypowerup.com if you want to check that out. I would love to have a conversation with you about what that looks like. Um, thank you all for tuning in. This has been really fun. Um, and I look forward to uh, talking to you soon on some conversations. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a fantastic rest of your day.